Welcome to sports in the high school football postseason. We start tonight with Macaulay who's playing in the state semifinals. A win tonight and they're on to the championship game. A championship game they've won the last two seasons trying to make it three in a row this year. Macaulay hosting Pope John Paul II, a team they beat last month by 21 points. Macaulay, they score first. William Riddle to Xavier Geyerdetz. That catch, that run, 28 yards, touchdown pass, 6 nothing. Macaulay, later on in the first, more William Riddle, more Xavier Geyerdetz. This one all in the air. Riddle looking up top, throwing it deep, going to find his man, Geyerdetz. Nice grab right there. 28 yards, a touchdown, makes it 13 nothing. Macaulay. Then, in the second quarter, same two guys, or actually the same quarterback, going to get things going. Here's Riddle, finding his man, Weston Hammond this time. 15 yards, that catch, and fighting his way to the end zone. That's a touchdown. Macaulay up 20 nothing. Blue Tornado, they roll. Winning streak continues. Final score tonight, 47 to 7. Now Macaulay moves on to the Blue Cross Bowl at Finley Stadium after the game. We talked to the Blue Tornado head coach, Ralph Potter, about playing for a state title in Chattanooga in two weeks. Yeah, I mean, I, that's, a, that's a special thing. I, we haven't talked much about it because, you know, you just don't want to jinx it. Uh, but, you know, the fact that it's going to be in Chattanooga uh, and we got the, the, a chance to be the first team from Chattanooga to win the state championship in Chattanooga, yeah, that's, that's pretty special. Tonight, several teams playing in Georgia in the second round of the playoffs. Tonight, single A trying. Wilcox County trying loses on the road in a heartbreaker. Wilcox County wins by one, 23 22, final in overtime tonight. Ringgold, they had a great season. Their season comes to an end there. Final score in that one, 14 7. It's 14 7. The final score there. Ringgold loses to Thompson tonight. Northwest Whitfield, a long road trip to Bainbridge, 48 7. The final in that one. Calhoun, they Get the win at home tonight against Ware County, so they move on to the next round. Final score there, 49 to 42. Let's go to South Pittsburgh for a quarterfinal game against Gordonsville. Very good team. Uh, South Pittsburgh, they've looked strong throughout this season. Uh, Richard Hunter here looking for his man, Jaden Mount. Going to find him. Nice catch, nice run. It's going to go for a touchdown. Makes it 7 nothing for the Pirates. South Pittsburgh has had an impressive season this year. 9-2 and two on the year. Both losses on the road to Oakland and Dade County. They've overcome a lot of obstacles as well, including a coaching change. Uh, still a strong season. Pirates. Uh, later, Hunter over the middle to Deja Robinson for a big game. That would lead to another touchdown, making it 14 nothing. Gordonsville will come back, tie it up at 14, but it was all the Pirates from their final score tonight. 44-14 South Pittsburgh. They are moving on to the state semifinals. We have more football to show you tonight. Red Bank hosted a quarterfinal game, and Ray County went on the road to see if they could extend their season. Now, welcome back to Sideline Wrap-Up. The Red Bank Lions have had an outstanding season so far. Started tonight on a seven-game win streak. Tonight at home with the Upperman Bees. First half, these teams are like boxers, trading punches. Upperman out of Baxter, Tennessee. They get on the board first with this touchdown run you see right here from Jackson Rollins. We're going to see a lot of Jackson Rollins in these highlights. Makes it 7 nothing Upperman. Lions with answers. Joseph Blackland to Tyler Wright for the score. We are all tied at 7 at this point. Upperman then uh, another Rollins touchdown here. You're going to see that in a few seconds. Uh, boy, he, uh, he had a Big night tonight. The Bees only lost one time this season. That was to Fayetteville, a team that Red Bank beat 28 to nothing. Later on, more Lions. Blackman to Rico Trimble, a very good player, ties it up 14-14. But before the half, another Rollins touchdown makes it 21-14. That's the score at halftime. Second half, different story. All Upperman pretty much. Final score there, 42, Red Bank 28. Red Bank season comes to an end. But what a great run for the Lions. We talked to Red Bank coach Chris Brown about what he told his team after tonight's loss. If, uh, <laughs> there's a quote, to love is to feel pain. And if you're not hurting right now, then, uh, then you obviously didn't invest as should. So when you have an entire community down here hurting, then that's just how much commitment you had back towards those young men. Um, so the hurt's got to be there because that means the investment's there. But over time, when the hurt passes, there's, a, there's an incredible amount of pride that comes with that. And I think when we look back on this season, I think we're going to be, well, we are, I already am, but we're going to be so proud of what these young men did. 
I'm sure that team is hurting tonight, but what a great run by Red Bank this season. Ray County on the road in Knoxville against the Powell Panthers. Panthers have the number one recruit in the country in defensive lineman Walter Nolan. We're going to see him here in a few seconds. Ray County had a great season, just two losses coming into this game, picking it up in the first quarter. Panthers on the move. Jordan Potts finding Aiden Green on a slant, takes it inside the five-yard line with that play right there. Big play by Powell. Going to set up the big boy touchdown. The five-star recruit, Walter Nolan, out of the Wildcat. Uh, that gives Powell a 7-0 lead early on in this game. Moving ahead, second quarter. Potts rolling to his left. Going to avoid the rush a little bit. Looking for the deep ball. Going to find eventually after he gets it off. J.J. Faust in the corner of the end zone. And a bunch of men down there. Uh, that's a tutty. Panthers out uh, in the lead. 14 nothing at that point. Ray County season, they come to a close. Final score tonight in Powell, 27-13 the final. Again, Ray County, a great season for those guys for sure up in Evansville. Across many parts of the country, the pandemic had a big impact on student attendance. It's happening right here at home too, and in some cases, the numbers are startling. In order to succeed, you first have to show up. Attendance is a game changer for success. It's a game changer for success in life. In Tennessee, if you miss more than 10% of school days, you're considered chronically absent. If you're missing 40, 50, 30, 15 days of school, that's going to be challenging for you to catch up because your grades are going to drop. During the pandemic, those numbers spiked up in Hamilton County, and some schools felt the effects more than others. Well, I think schools are impacted by the communities in which they live. At Orchard Knob Elementary, the chronic absenteeism rate went from 13% in 2019 to 44% last school year. That's an over 200% increase. As a truancy specialist, Timus Terry tries to figure out why students don't attend school. Different reasons um, could be homeless situation, um, could be um, lack of food. Karen Glenn is in charge of truancy specialists at Hamilton County Schools. We asked her why the pandemic impacted student attendance. Well, I think it was it was the unknown and people were concerned about their personal safety. Karen says the district created a three-tiered approach for addressing truancy in 2018. First, the school communicates with the family, then a truancy specialist makes a needs assessment, and then community partners are brought in to brainstorm support. We all sit around with the family, and basically what we do is we discuss, this has been provided, what have we missed? We asked Karen if the strategies changed with the pandemic's effects. It hasn't changed. It's just intensified because we recognize that we do need to have our students in school. On the ground, Tima says building relationships with students and families is the most important part of his job. If they can't make it to the schools, okay, then I'll meet you at your home and let's sit down and have this conversation. In the end, trust is key to getting kids back in these seats as the district continues to bounce back. As of earlier this month, the chronic absenteeism rate has decreased by about 1% district-wide compared to last year's figures, but it's still higher than pre-pandemic levels.